uh, give us to give us a lecture. Professor Ko is a professor at at the Seoul National University. Uh, he got his PhD from the University of Berkeley in 2006. Then he did a postdoc at the University of Berkeley till 2009. And then he joined the, the uh, case the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology uh, since 2009. Now he's a professor at the Seoul National University. His research interests include the flexible stretchable electronics for wearable electronics and the software robot application, laser assisted nano micro fabrication process development, laser nanomaterial interaction, and the clock assisted nano manufacturing. Uh, professor Ko is also an associate journal editor of the software robotics. So Professor Ko will deliver a, a, a lecture on the transparent electronics with a stretchability, flexibility to us today. So let's welcome Professor Ko. Okay. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, okay, uh, at first I want to thank the Professor Jianyo for the invitation to this interesting seminar. So today I will present our research progress on the transparent electronics with the stretchability and the flexibility. Actually, I have been working on this topic over the past 20 years and starting from the uh, flexible electronics on the plastic and also the paper and fabric and move to the stretchable electronics and currently working on the next generation uh, electronics with the transparency and also the stretchability simultaneously. Uh, firstly, I will briefly introduce my perspective on how the electronics technology will evolve in the near future. Uh, I have to say this is my very personal viewpoint and then you may have a, a, a different perspective. And this may uh, apply to any kind of electronics, but I want to give you an example of display. The first generation of the display started in a rigid and bulky shape. And usually this kind of a rigid and bulky uh, display cannot be portable, but usually placed fixed on a shelf or to the wall. The second generation of the display is in a flexible form. And actually we are in the transition from a rigid display to flexible display right now. The, the following generation of the display is currently under intense research development are expected to be stretchable form and the transparent form too. Here uh, you may see that the next generation of display expected to uh, evolve by adding the new value or new functionality from flexibility to stretchability and transparency and so on. So, and uh, we may apply the same expectation for technology evolution step for all the electronics to change it from rigid to flexible, stretchable and transparent form. Okay, so flexible electronics are the electronics built on the flexible substrate such as plastic, fabric, or paper. And it can be bendable and easily conform to the non-flat surface. And from the material such as uh, plastic, fabric, and paper, you may expect that it will be light and durable than the conventional rigid electronics. And it is the best device uh, form for the portable electronics because light and durable characteristics are the most important for the portable electronics. And stretchable electronics is uh, built on stretchable or uh, soft substrate. And it is an important device used for the human friendly soft electronics or uh, wearable electronics because human body is beyond flexible but is more soft and stretchable. And one may uh, think stretchable electronics is a simple variation of the flexible electronics. However, uh, 
I think personally, I think uh, stretchable electronics is very different from the flexible electronics and the way more complicated and difficult technology. And if the uh, wearable electronics is made in, uh, into a flexible electronics form, uh, it will be better than rigid electronics, but it's going to be still uh, uncomfortable compared with the uh, stretchable and soft electronics. So the stretchable electronics will be an ultimate form of the wearable electronics, including the implantable electronics. And this uh, stretchable soft electronics can be applied in applied to robotics fields such as uh, soft robotics. Okay, and compare with the uh, uh, flexible electronics and stretchable electronics, uh, stretchable electronics and transparent electronics has a relatively short history. And this is because there is a big technical hurdle to find the proper transparent conductor material. The new functionality that you may see uh, see the, the other side of the electronics will provide you uh, extra information that can be uh, that has been missing so far. And the transparent electronics can be used for transparent display, smart window, or transparent solar cells for building integrated solar cell applications. Again, uh, you may see that the next generation electronics is expected to evolve by adding new uh, function, new, new value or new functionality from flexibility, stretchability, and transparency. And those technology evolution step has been demonstrated separately. For example, uh, flexible or stretchable electronics are not transparent so far, and transparent electronics are usually rigid and not flexible or stretchable so far. So in our lab, we try to combine those new functionality together. For example, we try to develop a transparent electronics that can be flexible or stretchable at the same time. So uh, to realize the transparent electronics with flexibility or stretchability, what is the key issue and what is the possible technology? So that is going to be the first question. The key technology is definitely development of a transparent conductor. And as you already know, we have already a popular transparent conductor material, which is uh, indium tin oxide, uh, which is uh, ITO. And most of the optoelectronics use the ITO as a transparent conductor. However, ITO is the worst material for flexible and stretchable electronics because it can be easily develop cracks and also break under material deformation and stretching. And for rigid electronics device that do not move at all, and ITO is a totally fine material, but uh, we have to uh, develop a new transparent conductor material that can be flexible or stretchable to realize the transparent conduct electronics with the flexibility and stretchability. Actually, there are several candidates for this, uh, and among them, in our lab, we usually use the metal nanowire population network. And metal is the very ideal material for electronics with a high electrical conductivity, but metal is usually uh, non-transparent -tra like this. However, if the metal is made into the nanomaterial, it can be transparent and while keeping the good electrical conductivity of metal. And besides the good electrical conductivity and transparency, and this can uh, have good flexibility and stre stretchability too. And it is the ideal material to realize the transparent and transparent electronics with flexibility and the stretchability. And also there are uh, two issues in realizing the stretchable conductor. So firstly, there is a material issue. And unfortunately, there are not many uh, material that can be stretched and also highly electrically conductive as well. And some carbon-based nanomaterial conducting polymer, liquid metal, and hydrogel can do this function, but there are still some problems in those materials. And in another way, highly conductive but unstretchable material can be made into stretchable form by making serpentine shape 
Uh, however, this has also intrinsic limitation for stretchability. Besides the material issue, there is a manufacturing issue. And con conventional electronics fabrication process usually use a high temperature process and also highly corrosive chemicals, which are not compatible with the flexible or stretchable materials. So there is a strong need for a new low temperature manufacturing process development. Here, uh, we, we usually use the nanomaterial and the laser technology to develop this. So to achieve this goal in our lab, we develop uh, various technology from material to uh, process and also the application. And again, uh, to realize the wearable electronics, we develop uh, the combination of the material development processing scheme and also the device fabrication. And they are basically uh, three main components in engineering. However, uh, there are not many labs who can do all of these three material processing, material development and processing development and the device development at the same time. And most of the lab just focus only one or two item. And I think we are one of the few lab who can do all of these three items in the lab. And even though I'm in the mechanical engineering department right now, we develop a uh, material and which will be uh, pretty good. And some of the material or chemical engineering lab also sometimes ask for the material from our lab. And this is something I am very proud of myself. Uh, I am very proud of about my lab. And to realize the wearable electronics, basically we need to realize the four components in the flexible or stretchable form. The four components are firstly information display. And the second part is the information input device such as a keyboard or touch panel. And third one component is the information processing device such as a transistor and the memory. And the last component is energy generation and storage device. These pictures are uh, the demonstration of the, uh, in our lab by our lab student. Our graduate students are expected to go through the whole engineering cycle from material development and process and also the final working device demonstration. And 20 years ago, our objective was to make all the electronics in the world into flexible electronics form. And then 10 years ago, uh, it was changed to make all the electronics in the world in a uh, stretchable form. And right now, uh, our objective is to make all the electronics into the transparent and flexible or stretchable form. To achieve this goal, uh, we use the nanomaterial. And this is because nanomaterial has a very unique characteristics that is totally different from the bulk uh, counterpart. And therefore we may overcome the limitation of the conventional bulk material. And first characteristics of the nanomaterial we are interested in is the size dependent thermodynamic property. And as we already know, and material melting is a material property. And once we decide the material, it will be a fixed value. And however, if the size of the nanomaterial goes down to a very small size, melting temperature will drop as the size gets smaller and smaller. And for example, the melting temperature of the bulk gold is around 1000 degrees Celsius. But if the uh, same material is uh, made into the nanoparticle, and if the size gets smaller than the several tens of nanometer, the melting temperature can drop to uh, almost like a plastic compatible, very low temperature. So this thermodynamic, this unique thermodynamic characteristics may provide the potential for low temperature process development because uh, for our flexible, stretchable, transparent electronics, because we are frequently deal with the uh, uh, low temperature materials. And second interesting characteristics of the nanomaterial is the size dependent optical property. So for, for the same material, nanomaterial may uh, show a totally different optical characteristics. For example, bulk gold usually show this kind of a yellowish color. However, when it is made into the nanoparticle and it may show totally different color depending on the size. So if I don't tell you this is gold nanoparticle, nobody is gonna recognize this is gold. 
So this happened due to the uh, surface plasma. And even though the metal itself is not transparent, and then it, it can be made into the nanowire and it can become a uh, transparent too. So we can develop a transparent metal. And the last interesting characteristic in the nanomaterial is the size dependent mechanical property. So when the system size gets smaller, the strength and the ductility of the nanomaterial will increase, will be increased compared with the bulk material. And for example, a single crystalline silicon is the one of the most fragile material in the world. It is very hard to imagine to bend the silicon wafer into the 90 degree or 180 degree. However, this will be possible if the same material is made into the nanowire. So this picture shows that the silicon nanowire and then can bend almost like 108 degree. So this uh, enhanced mechanical property will play a very important role in developing the wearable electronics which will undergo various mechanical deformation during the operation. So for a low temperature process development, we usually use the laser as a localized heat source to minimize the thermal damage to the substrate and for several uh, metal patterning without uh, using the conventional photolithography and the vacuum deposition processes. So for metal patterning process development, the focus laser is irradiated on the metal nanoparticle ink coated on the polymer substrate. And then only the uh, nanoparticle where the laser is irradiated will melt to make a continuous metal pattern. And the nanoparticle which was not irradiated with the laser and it's going to be just washed away uh, easily with the organic solvent cleaning. So this video clip shows the real-time uh, metal patterning by selective laser uh, induced melting of the nanoparticle for four-inch uh, wafer size sample. And this picture shows the final uh, metal patterning on the various polymer substrate by selective laser processing. So because the process is very fast, almost like a two meter per second uh, scanning speed, and then it can be done in five minutes for four inch wafer size metal patterning. So compare with the conventional metal patterning by conventional photolithography and vacuum deposition process. And this is a very fast metal patterning without using any vacuum environment. Because this is a fully digital process, there's no need for the photo mask and the design can be easily changed by just modifying the CAD data. The metal patterning resolution was uh, decided by diffraction and also the thermal diffusion. And it could go down to, we could go down to several uh, micron size when the continuous wave laser is used. And if we use the uh, more fancy laser such as femtosecond laser, and then we may minimize the thermal damage to the substrate and also the heat diffusion. So the resolution could be further reduced down to 200 or 300 nanometer. So this is almost comparable with the uh, comparable uh, resolution with the e-beam lithography process, but this laser-based process does not need any vacuum environment. As a second uh, processing method development to realize the highly stretchable and transparent conductor, we develop a new concept called mechanical percolation network. And when uh, the thermal, the, the metal thin film is pulled on both uh, end, and then it usually tends to generate the crack and then tear apart and finally lose the electrical conductivity. So additionally, the metal thin film is not transparent too. And however, when the metal nanowire population network is used to use for the electrode, it can achieve a high stretchability and also the high transparency at the same time. So compared with a traditional static percolation network transparent conductor, the mechanical percolation network can be highly stretchable while maintaining a good uh, electrical conductivity and also the optical transparency. So we use this uh, mechanical percolation network as a core platform to develop a stretchable and transparent electronics. 
So there are several parameters to make a highly conductive stretchable transparent electrode. Some researchers are trying to uh, focus on the smaller uh, development of a smaller diameter nanowire. So from our experience over past 15 years, what we found is that the smaller diameter nanowire can enhance the, may enhance the transparency only while the sacrificing the electrical and mechanical aspect. However, the longer nanowire can enhance the transparency and the electrical aspect and also the mechanical aspect simultaneously. So this is because the percolation network with the longer nanowire has a smaller number of the nanowire junction and the number of the nanowire junction greatly influence all the mechanical, electrical and optical properties. So we had better minimize the number of the nanowire junction and usually longer nanowire can reduce the number of the junction, which makes all of the problems. So therefore we try to develop a new synthesis method for a uh, long silver nanowire synthesis. Then we did that uh, almost uh, like uh, uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And uh, we could uh, successfully synthesize ultra long silver nanowire over 500 micron lengths by successive multi-step growth. Because this is like a kind of like a longer than 10 years old uh, result. I think there could be, now there could be the better synthesis method, but at th this time, this was kind of like a world record. And after synthesis, the silver nanowire population network usually need the thermal at uh, 250 degrees Celsius for several hours to reduce the junction resistance. However, this temperature uh, is 250 degrees Celsius heating for several hours is relatively high enough to degrade the flexible or stretchable substrate material. So therefore we uh, try to develop a laser nanowilding process. And when the laser is irradiated on top of the crossing uh, silver nanowire junction, and we could observe a very interesting phenomena of the laser intensity increase by 100 times only at the junction part. So the other part of the nanowire is going to be uh, just at the room temperature. So this can, uh, this localized uh, laser intensity increase is gonna cause the local heating at the junction only. And in this the selective nanowire welding only at this junction part without the thermal damage to the substrate or thermal damage to this uh, another part of the nanowire. And based on the very long silver nanowire synthesis and also the low temperature selective uh, uh, nano welding process, and we could make a first uh, highly flexible and transparent conductor, which is even better than the graphene at, uh, at the time when we developed this and graphene had the world record for this transparent conductor. But uh, for some part, our uh, longer nanowire transparent conductor even was even better than the graphene. So by adding another function, functional or nanomaterial to silver nanowire network, such as conducting polymer, and also or small, very small amount of the carbon nanotube to the silver nanowire backbone network, then uh, we could develop a highly transparent and also the highly stretchable conductor. And silver nanowire is kind of like a relatively expensive material because silver is uh, not a cheap material. So as an alternative to silver, the copper nanowire can be used for the same purpose. Even though the copper is very cheap, 100 times cheaper than the silver, it has a serious drawback in the severe oxidation in the air. So during the conventional thermal oiling process, copper usually get oxidized and lose the electrical conductivity. So however, uh, our laser nano welding process is a very fast process and it can, it can finish the nano welding of the copper nanowire before the copper nanowire get oxidized. So therefore, we could uh, prepare the copper nanowire-based stretchable and transparent conductor without the oxidation problem. 
So furthermore, we uh, developed a laser-based selective reduction to the convert the copper oxide nanowire back to the copper nanowire, even though it's uh, even after it's oxidized. So we call this a uh, nano recycling process, and this can be done uh, several times repeatedly. So up to this slide, I introduced the material and also the processing method development. And from this slide, I will try to introduce the various uh, example of the actual realization of the flexible stretchable electronics in a transparent form. And I think so due to the time limit, I will go through this uh, part kind of quickly. And if you are interested in the detailed technical information, and you may uh, read the journal papers. So this slide again is a, a partial list of the application demonstration in our lab to realize the wearable electronics. So they are a mixture of the either flexible or stretchable form. And some of them are transparent and some of them, them are not transparent. So I will, uh, I will not introduce all of them, but uh, in this presentation, I will mainly present the transparent electronics with the flexibility and the stretchability. So as a first example, we developed the various transparent and flexible electronics. And the first demonstration is a transparent and the skin mountable flexible touch panel. And also we develop a flexible uh, transparent memory the memory by copper nanowire population network and the transparent flexible UV sensor array on the, of the selectively grown zinc oxide nanowire was also demonstrated on the uh, flexible substrate. And the energy generation device such as a supercapacitor could be made into the uh, highly stretchable and also the transparent form. And here we developed a core shell type nanowire a population network because the base silver nanowire has a poor electrical stability. So during the operation, the silver nanowire get disconnected pretty easily. So we introduced the several uh, inert materials such as gold or gold shell or uh, polypyrrole layers to enhance the electrochemical stability. So uh, you can see the real picture of the device, supercapacitor. It can be stretched a lot and around like 50% and it's highly transparent like this. Point five efficiently. To more efficiently capture the particulate matter, and it can be reused after a simple washing, and also the pressure drop is going to be very small compared with the uh, PM capture efficiency. And also further by applying the current to the filter. Basically, this is a metal nanowire population network. So if we supply the current, it's gonna induce the dual heating. So uh, by just supplying the current to the filter to induce the dual heating, uh, it can kill the bacteria and also the virus on the mask by heating and while maintaining a moderate transparency to see the lip like this. So actually for this, we use the copper nanowire uh, population network for this transparent mask and also for the thermal steril sterilization. And electromagnetic interference shielding layer can be also made into the highly stretchable and also the transparent form. And this can be used to protect, protect the delicate electronic device that can be sensitive to the environment, environmental electromagnetic wave. And also uh, if some uh, device such as like a implantable sensor, which is which will be uh, sensitive to the electromagnetic wave. And then 
because uh, that kind of material device usually need the electromagnetic shielding material, which will be uh, similar to the skin kind of property, uh, stretchable and also uh, flexible, and also it could be uh, transparent too. And also the heater can also be made into the highly stretchable and also the transparent form. And the heater can be mounted on the skin. And for medical thermal treatment, so some treatment need the heating. And also the heater can be attached on the non-flat window, such as car windshield or ski goggle to remove the frost formed on the glass substrate. And the heater can be patterned for the localized heating. So you may see that uh, from the, with this uh, infrared camera image, you can see that localized heating. But if you see with uh, your eye, you cannot see any kind of pattern because it's uh, transparent. But there is uh, some kind of like a patterning of this conductive transparent conductor. And then when you apply the heat and then only some part is going to be heated up, but you cannot see which part is going to be heated up because it's uh, invisible to your eye. And the skin sensor can be also realized in a highly stretchable and transparent form. And by introducing the Kirigami concept, and basically the Kirigami is a Japanese style paper cutting skill. So by the combination of the mechanical percolation network of the metal and wire, and also the Kirigami uh, cut cutting, and then we could realize the highly stretchable and transparent sensors. So when we first demonstrated the transparent sensor and the typical question was, why the sensor need to be transparent? So the answer was uh, uh, kind of simple. And this is because uh, we can see the other side of the sensor and then we can gain more functionality and also more information, which was basically lost when, we, when the sensor is not transparent. So the transparent sensor is expected to play a very important role when it is mounted on, especially on the face or directly on the wound. So in these days, sensor is not used, is, is, are usually used to monitor the biophysical signal from the skin for a long time. But if the non-transparent sensor are mounted on the face or such as like uh, uh, some part of the face and also the other exposed skin part. And it, it's not gonna look good in a cosmetic manner. So especially when you use the sensor for a very long time. And uh, additionally, if the sensor directly, sensors directly attached on the wound, and if the sensors are transparent, we may observe how the wound is going to be healing. So otherwise, like if the sensor is non-transparent and if the sensor is directly attached on the wound part, and then actually you don't know how the wound is going to be healing. So the condition, you can gain more information directly. So the transparent and stretchable Kirigami sensor were demonstrated to measure the EEG, which is the brain wave, and EOG, which is uh, eye blinking, and ECG is a heartbeat, and EMG is a muscle movement. And so you may see that those all of this uh, data is uh, real data, recorded data, image with the transparent uh, Kirigami sensors we fabricated. So as a practical demonstration of our transparent uh, Kirigami sensor, we try to uh, use this transparent and stretchable sensor to control drone. And initially we uh, wanted to use the brainwave to control the drone. But uh, as you already know, uh, brainwave is kind of too weak. So finally we used the uh, EMG, which is a muscle signal to control the drone. And with the selective uh, laser in this Marangoni flow of the metal nanoparticle, we could demonstrate the 3D touch. 
and conventional 3D touch, such as a force touch in iPhone. I uh, usually use the two different layers, separate uh, 2D location touch sensor and also the press sensor. So the two different layers is uh, just attached back to back. So otherwise, uh, we need a special stylus such as a, a Apple Pencil is going to be needed to uh, get this kind of 3D touch functionality. So with the fine tuning of the laser parameter, uh, we could successfully make a unique uh, wavy pattern like this. And then the developed transparent force touch uh, could detect the touch location and also the touch pressure at the same time with just a single layer. So the sensing range is kind of broad and kind of sensitive too. And furthermore, uh, with the help of the machine learning and more delicate function, functional uh, device could be provided to the transparent sensors. And to detect the hand motion, we usually need the almost 15 to 20 strain sensors connected to each finger joint. So this kind of a sensor usually made into the globe shape. And then each of the, for the globe part, there are so many uh, strain sensors embedded into it. So we develop a unique sensor that can detect the hand motion in a single uh, sensor strip like this. So one sensor can detect the uh, multi-degree of freedom uh, hand gestures. So the AI or machine learning could successfully differentiate the superposed uh, electrical signal from the all the finger joint to this uh, single sensors. So therefore, instead of using the glove type uh, hand sensors with many strain sensors, we may use a simple single sensor attached on the wrist to monitor the hand motion. So this can be used for some kind of like a interface for a VR or uh, the cyberspace kind of things. And the sensor could be more, uh, could be more customized by adding a new function or uh, erasing the unnecessary functions. So the sensor could be realized in a skin attachable very thin sensors. And then this video clip shows that the arm detect the we, we attach the uh, this flexible and stretchable transparent sensor on the human skin, and then we try to use that for the AR VR application. And besides the mechanical sensor, a highly sensitive transparent temperature sensor could be uh, developed to measure the. Uh, delicate temperature change of uh, inhale or exhale to calculate the metabolic cost of the user. And this can be further used to endow the temperature sensing ability to the robot hand. Also, it can be uh, made into this kind of array shape to uh, measure the temperature distribution. So it could be transparent form and also non-transparent form and could be a flexible or stretchable form too. And the transparent flexible heater uh, can be uh, used for transparent soft robot application. So from this slide, I'm going to change a little bit gear for this uh, application part. So uh, by attaching the two uh, thin film layer with the different uh, thermal expansion coefficient, a soft thin film actuator could be developed. And then when it is heated up and it's gonna bend to, toward the uh, film with the smaller thermal expansion coefficient. So here we introduce a transparent heater between the two transparent film as a independent heat sources. And further, we introduce the chirality to introduce a more complex deformation. So for, us, for the same uh, platform, it can bend like this or with the, some chirality or it can wrap around like this. So this was induced by the anisotropic thermal expansion coefficient. And then with the transparent anisotropic actuator, uh, we could demonstrate a transparent soft crawling robot here. So we intentionally added the black mark 
at the edge of the crawling soft robot because this is a transparent and then hard to observe the movement. So the transparent robot has a three uh, different segment. So you can, from, you can see that from the, this thermal image, then the robot can uh, move forward or turn left or turn right by just uh, controlling uh, which part is going to be heated up. And also the additionally, we uh, transparent uh, Venus fly trap and also to transparent gripper could be demonstrated. So it's a, for a gripper, it's kind of hard to see. So there's a transparent gripper here. Then you can uh, pick up this uh, kind of material here. So when you heat it up, it deform and then pick up the uh, target. And also we demonstrated various uh, bio-inspired transparent or color changing soft robot. The first picture shows the transparent uh, flapping butterfly. And when we tried to uh, develop this butterfly five years, five years ago, actually we did not know actually there is a transparent butterfly. So we made the uh, transparent butterfly as a proof of concept of the transparent robot. But a few months ago, uh, I happened to find a very interesting picture of a very interesting similar transparent butterfly in nature. Actually, we did not expect this kind of butterfly really exist, but uh, we just uh, tried to make this out of our imagination. But actually there was a, a similar kind of a transparent butterfly that was a kind of a pretty interesting finding. And also we uh, may put the thermochromic ink on the transparent actuator. And also we could uh, demonstrate the blossoming color changing flower. The flower is ori originally is a black, and, but uh, it, it can change its color to red when it is uh, blooms. And also both the color and the shape change when it is heated up. So here we also use the transparent uh, heater. And in the similar way, by using the silver nanowire transparent heater, uh, we could make a color changing chameleon robot on top of the multiple layers of the transparent heater uh, with the thermal, uh, thermochromic liquid crystal ink. So when it is off, you can see that uh, it's kind of like a black color, but when, when it is turned on, and then you can see and it shows this kind of uh, various color with the different uh, the patterns. It, it kind of uh, tried to mimic the real chameleon uh, skins. Okay, so this is the video clip uh, of the chameleon robot. And this chameleon robot has uh, several photo detectors at the belly to detect the background uh, color where the chameleon is moving. And the color is uh, controlled on the chameleon skin by heating the transparent heater with the thermochromic liquid, ink, li liquid crystal ink on it. The chameleon robot can uh, make any kind of RGB color and some uh, simple pattern for the chameleon camouflage in nature. So for this uh, video clip, actually we did not demonstrate the pattern shape, but the pattern shape also we can uh, by just patterning the transparent heater. And then we can also uh, in introduce the pattern color, different colors. And the transparency is not, it's kind of a relative term. So for human eye and the visible wavelengths will be uh, detected by eyes. But uh, however, another insect can see another wavelength such as a UV or IR and that can not be detected by human eyes. So in the military purpose, the invisibility in both UV and also uh, visible and also the IR infrared wavelengths is very important. And we try to develop a thermal uh, electric based camouflage skin in infrared and also the visible wavelengths. So it's the thermal, thermal electric material can cool down or heat up 
by just uh, controlling the current. And also it can be made into this kind of a, a matrix shape. So we can control each of these uh, thermoelectric modules and to control the uh, temperature. And this temperature is going to be reflected back to this color because uh, we usually use the thermochromic ink on top of it. So depending on the temperature, the same pixel can show uh, uh, this kind of blue color or green color or red color like this. And also uh, this can be uh, demonstrated for infrared range. So this is the uh, mounted devices. And then you can see that this is uh, basically the infrared camera image. So the black color means it's a low temperature part and bright part is the uh, high temperature part. So when it is moving and then when it's uh, mounted on the skin, then you can see that uh, it can be cooled down and then it shows a pretty similar infrared uh, kind of characteristics with the background. So it's gonna look like uh, this part is empty. So when it moved to the high temperature part and then it can change the infrared uh, characters again. Also, it can adapt to this uh, background infrared temperature. So it's gonna also look like a uh, empty part. So if we can scale up this kind of uh, infrared and visible wavelengths uh, skin to like a human size, and then we can uh, induce the chemo thermal camouflage to uh, the bigger scale. So when this uh, infrared and visible camouflage skin is mounted on the skin of a soldier and the camouflage in visible wavelengths, so it can uh, mimic this kind of a uh, uh, color and the pattern on the soldier uniform. And also it can be uh, uh, camouflage the infrared uh, heat signature of the human body. Actually, this idea was obtained from the old movie which is which the title is a predator and it's starred by Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I think it's a, whether you have ever seen this one, this one is very interesting and exciting movie. So if you have any chance, I suggest you to watch this. So you can see here, Arnold Schwarzenegger is almost dead. And the this alien can see only infrared wavelength range. Then the Arnold Schwarzenegger happened to uh, covered with the mud and uh, his signature was blocked. So even though Arnold Schwarzenegger was uh, in, just in front of this uh, uh, alien and the alien could not see. So by if we can control the heat signature on the human skin, and then we can do the very similar thing. And then uh, you may have some question why we need to just uh, focus on this uh, his signature because currently in the military, usually they do not use the visible uh, detection. So uh, the covert operation usually done in the uh, on the dark. So infrared detection is very important. So if we can hide our uh, his signature, and then we can make a very uh, important infrared camouflage devices. So we are trying to use this kind of technology for the, uh, this kind of uh, camouflage things. And this can be used for the military, not just for military, and this can be used for the leisure and so on. And also the fashion things. So uh, let me summarize my talk. And in our lab, uh, we have been uh, trying to develop a various electronics in flexible or stretchable form to realize the wearable electronics. And in recent years, we are trying to develop a next generation transparent electronics with the flexibility or stretchability. So the reason why we focus on the flexibility and stretchability because we want to use them for wearable electronics application. And because the human body is not just a rigid, it's a somewhat soft and stretchable too. So for a better uh, compatibility, all of the electronics should be made into the uh, flexible or uh, stretchable form. And we have demonstrated many devices in uh, from information display and information input and uh, information processing and also the energy devices. And 
we hope to integrate those developed components to realize the fully uh, functional wearable device in the near future. Okay, so that's it for my talk and thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for your very interesting lecture. Uh, you tell us so many wonderful results on the material synthesis, material processing and the application. Actually in the application part, you mentioned so many different yeah, devices. Yeah. yeah, it's really amazing. Okay, so now it's open for question and comment. Any question or comment? Or maybe I'm gonna ask, um, I'm, uh, I can ask the first question. So for the, uh, for the material part, for the materials processing part, you, you talk about one is you put a polypilot on some metal nano wire. As, uh, as you told us, it can improve the stability. So oh, yeah. how so how how much is the improvement in the stability? Oh, actually, uh, if you do not have any coating layer, mm. shell layer, mm. uh, I'm during the uh, electrochemical uh, study, mm. it's gonna look like this. Everything oh. is going to be just you know disconnected. So oh. just one scan is gonna kill the sample. Oh. So uh, it's gonna, uh, you know, give a very big difference. It's a simple coating. And if, if we do not have any coating, mm. and then uh, the stability of the, this silver nanowire is going to be very unstable. I see, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, I have one question, you, please. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Professor Ho is very, very, okay. Uh, Nice talk. Okay, I learned a lot. Okay, but uh, most of okay, I cannot get the principles. Uh, I need to learn more. Okay, so uh, one okay, how one question is why you can turn the figure movement right through the some attached to the wrist, right? Uh, what oh, the principles? Okay. Yeah. You mean the the machine learning sensor, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You control the finger, right? Through you some, some okay, some skin electrons on the wrist, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, basically, this is a resistive sensor. So when the uh, finger is moving, and we call this part as a uh, epicentric motion part. So all of the, uh, you know, this uh, finger connected muscle is should go through this part. So when okay. this uh, must, uh, the finger is moving, and then we can uh, see the very slight muscle movement here. And then depending on the location, even though there's only a single uh, resistive uh, sensor here, and then all the sensing part, sensing data is going to be kind of like uh, integrated. So we can have only one single signal. And then this one single signal actually contains the uh, inference from each of these uh, fingers. But if we just see that, and actually you cannot see the difference, but by just using the machine learning, and then machine learning can differentiate whether the signal came from the, this finger or this finger or this finger. Okay. So oh, okay. That so actually, without the machine learning, we cannot do this kind of function. Okay, so in that case, for different people, maybe the okay the signal will be different, right? So yeah, the yeah. you have okay, okay, yeah. And, but if we, we also use the transport learning, so all of the people use this kind of thing because uh, after the learning, and then we can do the very short calibration, like just three second or five second, and by using the transport learning, and then we can directly use the the learning data to all of the people pretty easily. So okay. this is uh, called as a uh, transport learning here. Okay, so you first, you do have, have you test uh, this, uh, you know, this we, you call the epicentral, okay, uh, a muscle movement, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, so that's very nice. Okay, I, I write down your paper. I, I will read, okay, carefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, very nice. So, okay. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah physically. Uh, yeah. Uh, one more question. Sorry, okay. One more question. No, no. Well, I, I can you you have done a lot of application using the okay, you know, so for some movement, right? You know, you you use a uh, you know the nature inspired. Okay, you know this movement, uh, the motion, right? Yeah. So for that one, so how how do you control that one? Okay, it's through the thermal, right? Thermal energy. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh. Because uh, my background is thermal science, so we usually use a thermal, I mean, heat control to oh. induce the, uh, I mean, to, for the color change and also the movement, deformation, for everything, we usually use the heat. Oh, okay, so, okay, so okay. Most of the part uh, I showed you in this picture, and then without the sensor, sensor, because sensor does not change anything. So besides the sensor, uh, color change thing and uh, the shape change thing and actuator, everything, most of the part is just uh, we usually use the heat. Okay, 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 very nice. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, maybe I read more, more paper. <laughs> okay. <the> group. <laughs> I can learn more. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Very nice talk. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, Professor Cole, let me just continue Professor Chin's uh, uh, question. Okay. Just now he asked for the movement, you use the heat to control it. So may I ask what is the temperature? Uh, for this one, uh, you may see that. So we try to uh, induce the uh, deformation at the low temp relatively low temperature. So you can see that it's around 50 degrees Celsius, but conventional uh, actuator usually is a pretty high temperature, like around mm over 100 degrees Celsius, but our device is kind of pretty efficient because uh, everything is built in. So we could induce this kind of deformation at the relatively low temperature. So it can be done around 50 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's not, that, not that high yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's still high, but it's uh, compared with another <laughs> electrothermal actuator, it's mm. kind of low i think <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah okay any more question Yeah, I think certainly we need more time to digest it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> your legacy, yeah we will we will need the, your your papers here yeah. Yeah. So, Professor Chin, Chin said, do you have any other comments or we... Yeah, I, I, I found a very nice talk because I need some time to catch up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, should, I should have... Uh, too many more. information come to my mind, you know, yeah. come to my, okay, yeah. may, okay too, too fast, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe after the COVID-19, we can invite you to Singapore. So, yeah. so that will be easier for us to, yeah. <laughs> to understand the knowledge. Uh, yeah. For long term, uh, for long time discussion, I think, okay, maybe you are too busy in North Korea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually uh, visit uh, Singapore almost every year before COVID-19, but uh, I, have, I haven't visited uh, Singapore for a long time. <laughs> no, I think uh, between Korea and uh, Singapore is already open, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah. But, I'm, when, but still, when you come back to Korea, we have a uh, ten days, uh, you know, self uh, quarantine. Uh, oh, still in, in Korea, still that's, that's yeah, yeah we, we still have. But I, I, I heard that it's going to be removed. But yeah. uh, we still have. Yeah. Oh, okay. In Singapore, if you have okay, have the vaccination right in yeah. three, have the booster. Okay, no need. <laughs> Even no, no need to the uh, PCR, okay, AR team, okay, measurement, no need. Yeah, yeah. That, that's much better. As you know, like uh, currently in Korea, we have so many 